Okay, everyone ready? Where's Deirdre? I came all the way because of you. So, <laughs> no, really. Um, thank you, thank you so much for staying so much. And yes, she is to blame because she asked me once, and then she asked me again, and the again was after my partner, who was here in the picture, left for two weeks, and I was so finished that I said I got to get out of here. So I came. Um, I start with this. Um, I'm going to try and do this real fast because I do things fast. It's kind of a long video clip. Um, so. I'll drive in. This is uh, a photo of myself and uh, someone I fell in love with. And I start with falling in love because it's really central to how um, I, what I call is my awakening. It's political awakening. And um, I fell in love with this man and I fell in love in a way that I never fell in love before. It was like, wow. And um, I was totally open. And what happened is that um, uh, it was very, very new because I was so open. And then, uh, as most Israeli men, he was called to do the reserves. The reserves, if you don't know, is to do a, an army service once a year or something. And um, he was a musician, musician then, and he was debating whether to go, and he was uh, talking about, for a week, he was talking about, should I go, should I not go? And I was sitting there with my ears as big as, you know, because I was listening. Usually, that's what we do a lot of times, we listen. And it was his issue, because, you know, I finished my art duty, I didn't have to go. So, and then suddenly after a week it dawned on me, wait a minute, this is my time. You know, instead of working, I'm listening, I'm becoming, you know, the vessel, whatever. And, and I was thinking, this is a man who, for the first time in my life, I felt jealousy. Um, I would tear anyone, any other woman's eyes out if she came near him. And I never had this before. This was totally new for me. So, you know, and embarrassing. Okay, now I can say it, but then it was like, I was very embarrassed. So, and I was thinking, wait a minute, if another woman would come near him, I'd be so aggressive, but if the army comes to call him, I have nothing to say. I have absolutely nothing to say, and the army in our country means that you can die, okay? So what happened is that I, basically I shifted from being jealous, very jealous, to being zealous. What do I mean? I mean, um, Okay, in the last 50 years, Israel has taken part in a record number of wars, almost unheard of in other democratic countries. Because this biography is shared by all of us who live here, we are blind to how abnormal this is. And this is very important because I live in Israel, and it's like, does a fish see water? We think that usually, you know, we live kind of normally, and then we have a few wars. But no, it's absolutely the opposite. Just li You don't have to understand Hebrew, but this is since uh, our, my family immigrated to Israel in 73. These are all the wars that basically I've lived through, big wars, small wars, mini wars, action, um, action wars. They have all these very sexy names, so all these awful wars, okay? So, um, and I realized I was silent, and this is actually this work I did in this recent uh, last war, uh, because again, I was feeling I was totally silenced. And I realized I was si and so I'm gonna jump back and forth. So I was, um, I realized I was silenced about such a crucial issue, and I opened the newspaper, and I looked for my view. I think, I was thinking I'm a woman, okay? And what's a, what is a woman's point of view? And I didn't, I wasn't a mother yet, but I was thinking mothers, we're the ones who, you know, the, the person grows in our body. Then we're the ones who usually do most of the labor intensive work. And then we live in a country which conscripts, when, um, conscripts men and women at the age of 18. And our voices, where are our voices? We have nothing to say about this, this, this amazing thing that we made. So I opened the newspapers and looked at the, um, I need words. Uh, nobody knows Hebrew here. At the, at the editorials, okay, where people say their views. Okay, what's a woman's point of view? I was looking for what a woman's point of view. And this is from uh, about a year ago. I looked for all the editorials in mainstream newspapers. And you can see that it's mainly one sex, one color. And I organized it according to bars because it's kind of like a jail. There's, you know, no, no women's voices are really being heard. So I took that personally as my voice is not being heard. Uh, and this, I'm showing another, um, this is not the newspaper, this is a wall from, um, it's called um, the House for, uh, for Boys, okay, for our boys. It's, it's, um, you have houses like this in almost every city that commemorate the dead of the war. And just look, and it's called the House of the Boys, even though you have a few women there, but it's called the House of the Boys. So here we have uh, men and boys, and then we have this from the last war as well. 
uh, from someone else, a, a girl. She wrote, we killed their boys, they killed our boys, now we will kill more of their boys, and they will kill more of our boys, stop boys. And I'm thinking, okay, I love this man. I have lots of men I love. I mean, my father, my brothers, and I don't have anything to say about this. So, um, and then I, what happened is that um, I was a filmmaker then, and um, one of the main laws of making films is look for the conflict. I don't know, right? Somebody of you knows. It's like, look for the conflict. So, and I was thinking about something else. So, remember this slide, competition or co cooperation, and remember, uh, you, you know the name of the, these films, there's three or four of them out, and you, you see it's usually competition and conflict. I was sent to do, I was invited to do a film about two women, an Israeli and a Palestinian, who were invited to do a jeep rally in the um, Sahara Desert of Morocco, and they were friends, and they were doing this jeep rally in order to show the world, like, to, it was a political statement uh, that women have a voice, hello, yay, finally, and women are opposed to violence, and actually we can get along, okay? I don't use the word peace, because that's too big a word. Um, now, the production, I'm just a director, I have to report back to the production company and the TV companies, and they were telling me, and I was, I was interested in how they get along, these women. Like, what's, what's the glue of the friendship? What's this magic thing? You know, it's like getting along with another human being. I mean, that's hard enough now. Getting along, too, from different countries, enemy countries. You know, what puts them together? But the, but the, um, the production company was interested in, um, they don't really, they're not really friends, and we want conflict, and we want ratings, so, Make them fight. They get along? No, they don't get along. They didn't believe. And I said, yeah, they get along. Well, then make them fight. So here I am with my agenda. And in order to make a film and in order to, you know, make a living, I have to kind of, I can't put on exactly my agenda. So anyhow, um, I'm not going to go into the specifics of this film, but I'm going to say that this film kind of influenced everything that came afterwards. And I'm saying again, I wasn't a mother yet. Um, Ten years afterwards, um, oh, I forgot to say. Resolution 1325 of the UN. Somebody knows what it is? Oh, great. I'm so happy to be the one telling you. Okay, you need to remember this number. Resolution 1325. It's calling for uh, inclusion of women in conflict areas to be in the negotiation teams because women are not in the negotiation teams. Uh, why? Well, one, why they're not? We know why they should be because, well, we're 51%. And number two, women are um, affected differently by war. And there, we're, our voice is not, um, are not I'm, not, I'm not, I'm not even going into like, are we, can we get to along better or something? It's just that first one, we're 50%. Number two, we are affected very differently by war. Usually what happens is now there's no, there's no front and back. Everyone's in the front, okay? Whistles fall on my, on my neighbor's house, on people's houses, on all sides. So women are actually at the front. They're actually so, being soldiers. And, um, uh, and, us and it affects us because we have to usually stop working. Uh, the kids, all the, cl um, the, the schools are shut down. So, uh, and there's no remuneration for women because it's, they're not really l losing work. It's, it's, anyhow, w women are the ones who are not being counted. And then I got pregnant. Uh, I finished the film and I got pregnant with twins. And what happened is that I'm, um, that this whole living in this country and realizing where I'm living affected my whole thought process. Um, I'm not going to read the whole text, but it's like two penises floating around inside my one female belly. I am three people, two males and a female. And I finish with, uh, well, maybe I have the, a Palestinian and Israeli inside of me because of the story, the famous story of, uh, of uh, Cain and Cain, uh, no, not Cain and Abel, um, Yaakov, Esav. Yaakov, Yaakov and Esav, who are twins and who are the enemy nations. So I'm thinking, you know, here I made a film, I'm trying to solve the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, how noble of me. So maybe, you know, I have twins in my belly, and I'm thinking, so these are my thoughts, because it, it, it really, to, if I mother them well, maybe they won't fight, you know. I'm, here I'm thinking, maybe, maybe I can solve the conflict, and if you, and what's also interesting is that twins have been, uh, they have a mystical meaning in many cultures. In fact, uh, the mother with the twins sometimes was killed, or one twi twin is killed. Anyhow, so you have all this, all this past coming to haunt you when you're in this situation. And I, I was in the hospital, and what interests me is the, the gap between what we see visually, you know, as an artist, and what actually is going on. And what actually was going on was this. This is what I was thinking. If this is how we treat women 
at the height of creating humanity, when both her and the new creature are at their most vulnerable, then no wonder humanity is in such shit. Okay? I really, this kind of was a dawning, because the way I was treated in the hospital, the way the whole, and, it, and I don't blame them, it's just obvious that knowledge, tons of knowledge, which is here, is missing. So I got pregnant with twins, and as you know, as we all know here, that the history of art is usually uh, has one woman uh, mother in it, and I studied art, and here we have Virgin Mary from a poster in New Zealand. Um, I'm not going to go into it. I have this one. I'm not going to go into it. Um, and as you know, Andrea Lissy, she has one thing. She says, indeed, no body is more cruelly posed at the intersection of the visible and the invisible, the public and the intimate, then the maternal body. So what I did is actually is um, um, I turned my, um, my camera to my body and to the leftovers of the skin after I had the twins. I had um, something that uh, many women have actually, and of course it's not spoken about. I'm thin. I had a huge pregnancy. No one, who's, who's, I, when I talk to students, I usually try to calm them down. It doesn't happen to everybody, and you know, and this is why if it does, and, but it does happen. It happens a lot more than we know, and I interviewed um, plastic surgeons because it turns out uh, women are paying lots of money to get the skin removed, but um, what interested me was um, the visual aspect of it as an artist because as you see, what it, uh, after recuperating how horrible it is, I really realized it's actually not horrible, it's actually beautiful. And it resembles what I saw in the plane coming over here, which is the earth. And it's my favorite. I'm always glued to the windows, and I always take tons of, of photos. And, and it's here on my body. And here I am living in a country or nationalities that are always fighting for Mother Earth. Mother Earth and Mother Earth. And here is Mother Earth. Where you, it's like, And you're not taking care of Mother Earth. Not at all. Because um, anyhow, so I did a whole series that... Um, a project called The Mother, Daughter, and Holy Spirit. These are photographs, and they are not photoshopped. This is really important. Um, and in fact, because I was, just a second, because I was a filmmaker, here's the size of them. Because I was a filmmaker, um, wait, because I'm, I don't know this program so well, so, because I'm on a Mac, I'm from a PC. Um, <laughs> Because I was a filmmaker, I didn't really treat the photographs as uh, photographs. For me, I'm still a filmmaker, but I can't make films because I have twins and one had some kind of health issue. So, it's, so what happened is that I didn't plan this. I was kind of in limbo as, as you know, I couldn't have a job, all these story, awful stories, et cetera. And the film was stolen from me by the producer because, you know, I can't do much if I have twins. Anyhow, he got the money, I got the film, kind of. So... Um, trying to be fast and remember what I was going to say. What I, um, I wanted, first of all, to make the photographs really, really big because I felt this is a hidden issue and I want this to be huge so that everyone experiences like I do or like we do. So I made it as big as I could um, um, afford. And people say, oh, you have so much uh, courage to, you know, put the camera on your own bodies and expose yourself like this. And I said, what was really hard was paying all that money because I was a filmmaker and no one really knew. He said, they're doing art. What are you doing? And for me, it wasn't art. Ah, now I remember. It was storytelling because each of the photos is actually a scene for me. It's a scene and it has a story. And what I do in, lots of, in some, some lectures is that I... Um, I talk about each photo. I will not talk about each photo now. I want to get going. But for instance, this, this photo is um, about um, this. No creature in the world takes longer to mature than a human child does, nor does any other creature need so much for so long before his or her acquisition and production of resources um, matches his consumption. This is by Sarah, Sarah Blaffer Hardy. She's a, a sociologist and anthropologist. Anthropo Anyhow, you know what I mean. And she's, she's doing amazing work. I write, wrote about her in the column for Deirdre's Foundation in May. So you can read what I have to say about her. Um, this is, for instance, Bad Aid, it's called. And it's about the, um, the lousy help you get. And you're, like, you know, you're in this situation and people say, oh, go tape a, take a nap or go um, uh, read a book. And I was like, I, my intellectual part was... was 
in pain more than anything. I needed more intellectual stimulation than a nap, for instance. Um, and then, now I want to talk about my sort of activism, which is actually I take my art into the public sphere. The gallery is not enough for me. Being a filmmaker, I seek interaction, I seek story, and also I, my time is limited, obviously. So, for instance, I became very active in um, the, um, the talk about, not the talk, about the issue of postpartum depression. My view is that basically, usually there is not, and other people have thought this way, this as well, that there's not postpartum depression so much as there is um, a society that does not support mothers. But obviously, there are a few who have an extreme, you know, situation. But um, like 80 percent have, 80 um, percent of the stories can be, um, um, if you have support, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, it will be. Uh, Anyhow, what I'm trying to say is that I try to drag this knowledge into the public sphere, into main, this is a mainstream newspaper in Israel, and they never publish these things, okay? In Israel, I don't know how you guys got exhibitions, because for me it was every exhibition I, I managed to get is pulling so much teeth, I really have teeth problems now. So, um, and here's another um, um, article in a mainstream weekend magazine about gender education in the formal education system because it's obvious that this knowledge is life-saving and and we're usually what we're doing is we're putting out fires because you know I mean the situation in Israel for instance segregation and in buses in the religious uh, sect if you know that we have segregation of women and men women are supposed to sit in the back men are supposed to sit in the front this is a huge issue and uh, and people are we have all the gender problems everyone has, but it's obvious to me that gender education is, is in the root of it. So I've become active in trying to bring this also into news. So for me, it's the galleries are also the newspaper. The galleries also uh, interview on TV. For instance, I was interviewed on TV for um, an exhibit on postpartum depression, the only the first one in Israel, curated, curated by the woman sitting next to me. And I was invited after they interviewed me about my work, et cetera, et cetera, and then they told me, but we're not going to show your work. They said it live. I was sitting there in the, in the TV station. They said, no, but we're not going to show your work. And I was like, uh. And so why? Because, you know, it's too whatever. You, you saw some of the work. It's too whatever. And we said, you guys show violence, and you have no problem showing that, and you have a problem showing it's not even a woman's body after birth. It's, like, really artistic. And so finally what we did is that we did subversive feminist uh, activism, and I just, you know, I had my catalog with me, like a baby takes a blanket, and I just picked it up, and so that's, I also did um, another activism I did is mother activism is, this is also in a mainstream newspaper about uh, against homework, so my kids have a mom who goes to be interviewed in the TV against homework. So uh, I'm going to run. I said I'm going to run. What is a women's point of view? Let's stay with that uh, thought. Depends on the size of the sink and the windows above the sink. You've heard that one? You haven't heard that one? Lucky me. Okay. So, okay. This is a kind of... You, you've heard that one. Maybe it's a Jewish joke. I don't know. So... Um, this is something that, you know, uh, it's a, you're supposed to joke about... Well. It's a joke about the size of our brains, okay? Let's put it on the table. And so I actually use this whole joke to turn it, um, turn it for ourselves. So I said, okay, what is the point of view of a woman uh, ab of, of the window above the sink? And I did a huge ex exhibition called Invisible Invaluables. And I'll show you some of the images and I'll talk a little bit and then I'll go again. Um, for instance, you have uh, these images are of the windows in my house. Now, I had twins. Uh, we had tons of bombs going off. I, you can't leave the house alone with twins. It's really hard, even, alone, even without a war. And having a war, it's even, you know, going to... A, it's, so you stay home a lot. And I was very conscious that I'm not the only one stuck behind bars. Uh, Palestinian women are also very stuck behind bars. So it's always I'm thinking about the women at the other side. And, and I was... This is also of windows. It's of the shades, the Israeli shades with their clothes and of water. Uh, I call it the veil, the veil of the wall because I was thinking of the veils on the other side. 
And the wall actually looks quite similar to these kinds of things. So this is my photo of the separation wall. So these are the thoughts that are going on in my mind, and this is how it looks in the exhibit space. Obviously, I'm not the only woman artist thinking about being in jail and being stuck at home. So this is of uh, Orna Benami, who's a very good sculptor. And this is how the, the space looked. It was uh, divided into actually four. There's another room, but it's not here. You, you go through the kind of jail, but then you have this kind of enlight enlightenment. Because you know when women say, I deserve medals? You know, I'm doing so much work, I deserve medals. So I was saying, I deserve medals as well. And so I gave myself an exhibition that looks like a jewelry store, kind of. You see, uh, the, all the walls are black, and everything's very fancy and pretty and clean, all the stuff that you don't have at home. And what, I'm uh, showing you how it looked, and for instance, here's an image, and you, you can recognize what's, for instance, in this triptych, right? Okay. Now, um, just to say that the curator of the show is Dr. Hadar Sheflon Katsav, who's also my friend, and she, I think, is one of the first women in Israel, and she her, who wrote her doctorate thesis on... Artists, women who become mothers and their art. Okay, so this, she, it took her seven years to write it. It came out at 2007. And she curated the show. Here's another image of, let's see if you can get what this is. This, and here's a, tri it's, a it's also a triptych. Come on, mothers, you know what it is. <sighs> okay, it's, um, it's baby food uh, left out of the fridge long time because you have no idea what's going on in your house. Uh, I call it universal lace. It's everything. It's all the, this is also from pacifiers. It's called mystic topaz. All the names usually are of gems. And the idea was that in all the works are not photoshopped. They're from taking care of the kids. And in one kind of second, while everything was happening, there was this moment that the light met the thing, met the that. And, and, I, beca and I got my artist back for like one moment. And I just got the images, and it's a miracle that they, because it was this not, not a great camera, and I didn't have much, you know, so. But each image has a meaning. So, for instance, pacifiers, pacify is to make peace. And here we are again, the meaning, I'm always busy of the political meaning of the work I'm doing, because army and man and hero and heroes of, is so big in our country. And it's like, hey, you guys, you know, and... Um, for instance, this is an image I made later of uh, our living room, and I call it protecting. And you know that thing where the kids are, you know, having these awful noises where you think their head is all over the place, and so you protect all the, um, all the furniture. Um, well, protecting, keep that word in your mind. And now I'm going to jump again to the last war to a poster in uh, uh, a municipal city in... Uh, in um, and Israel, and it says here, and I, I didn't invent this, swear. IDF soldiers, the residents of Or Yehuda are with you. Go pound their mother and come back safely to your mother. <laughs> you know, it's like, you can't talk when you see that. And you know who wrote, who, whose idea this was? Of the mayor. And you know what? even worse is that under the poster uh, in Facebook, most of the comments were like, yeah, give it to them. Except for to my two and a half friend feminists who were like, Ugh. So this is where we're at. And I'm trying, you see, for me, I kind of bring the extreme angle because it's very um, potent for my life. And also I think it informs all of us. I think it gives us a kind of a, another point of view. Now, remember the protecting thing? This is a poster uh, during the war. If you see a little girl, she's blonde, okay, Israelis, some are blonde, but, you know, she's blonde, and it says, thank you to those, to all those who are protecting us, protecting, again, thank you, okay? Now, this was said to, uh, uh, this is what I, I made in the war, in the Facebook, because I couldn't, I, I, I just, I can't, it's like, I, see, this is what happened to me when wars happen, because I feel so helpless. I said, to all leaders, killing is not protecting, because the idea of, I mean, they're so, that's, you know, that's what they think. And here I jump again to the idea of men and mothering. Now, my dear partner, who I'm still in love with, and he's an amazing uh, father, and I owe him a lot, and he teaches me a lot about mothering as well. Um, he, did a, he does a lot of mothering, fathering, and there's a film called The Other Side of the Glass. 
Have you heard about it? This, uh, it's an independent film by I think someone, I think she's American, and this is from the film or the activism around the film. Dads have the need to protect. Here we are again, that word. But if we don't have the information to be able to protect, it's like a dad talking, okay? We are useless. And this uselessness is huge because it goes to where I'm showing you. And I've, I've been researching this, and you know, I'm giving you just the tip of the iceberg, but it's, these things are connected, actually, in fact. Here's another uh, male mothering, and obviously a lot of the photos I took were of people sleeping, because that's when I could use the camera. And this is an amazing quote by Benito Mussolini, and it's a real quote. War is to man what motherhood is to woman. So again, this seems like an old quote, but from where I'm standing, it's like, it's alive and kicking. So uh, this is uh, another work. Uh, it's called Battle, Battle Crown. It's the base of the bottle of a baby, and it's a crown because, you know, I want this, I want this majestic um, attitude. And now these are... Uh, unimportant objects can smell life or death. Um, what I'm alluding to is, um, I'm just going to show you the, uh, for instance, nipples. You know, uh, the wrong hole of a nipple can, you know, be hell. It can either, uh, if you have a big one, then the child can choke. If you have a small one, then they can start it up. These are real. And in, for instance, in Beterem annual report, that's uh, Safe Kids Israel, an NPO which aims to promote, promote child safety, Two-thirds of child hospital hospitalizations are due to home accidents. Most of these injuries are due to falls, burns, drowning, poisoning, choking, car accident, da, 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 every, everyday causes. So basically what we're doing is life-saving. We are the ones protecting life. Let's get this order back to where it's supposed to be. I developed this with my partner Hadar in the book Counting uh, on Marilyn Waring, which is a copy here. It's a chapter about... Um, the economic status of Israeli mothers, but basically I think we can all kind of connect. It's about, and here I'll give you some, some parts of it. Now, this is true. The National Insurance Institute of Israel defines, this is, uh, defines the job of parenting as not working. This is, the, this is the words. This is the words, the actual words. The first month of intense healing and taking care of a baby are called birth vacation. It's called vacation, okay? <laughs> yes, laugh, please. It's not maternity leave, it's vacation. According to the United Nations National Accounting System, this work, this is what Marilyn says, is of little or no importance. Thus, it's not counted in any of our state economies. It's much bigger than you and me, okay? Uh, you know, money. Here, let's get to money. In spite of the mentioned above, in, you know, 75 in Iceland, as you probably know, 90% of the women went on strike. They called it vacation, by the way, because women don't like being bad girls. So they called it a vacation day, which is also interesting. Here we are on vacation again. And I have a wiener and a small newspaper here because that was the best-selling. <laughs> the wieners were, how did kids eat that day? What did men feed them? That's the best-selling thing of uh, Finland, right? And the small newspaper is really interesting for us because the women went on strike, and the women were the um, letter setters in the papers, okay? So what they printed, they went back like Cinderella at midnight, okay, to do their paper. Midnight Cinderella, they're doing the paper, and of course there's not enough, enough time to do paper. So they did a small paper. Okay, so it's a small paper. But what was in the paper? Only articles about the, about the, 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 the strike, so we need to get there. Where are the newspaper writer papers? It's like we need, you know, influence. Anyhow, so what I'm after about half a year after I made, uh, we made the, um, the exhibit, which opened International Women's Month in uh, Tel Aviv and the other one in Herzliya, the 10 city protest started, which we know is Occupy, etc. 2011, all over the world. And in Israel, we had an, an amazing um, uprising, which was actually it was led by women. By the way, you probably know it was led by women, which by an artist. It was led by an artist, by, by a filmmaker, and uh, this, is, uh, this is not an actual tent. If you see, it's made, it's, it's an art piece. Um, and then what happened is that, why did these, uh, I'm, we're soon getting to, I think, a closing. Um, the protests were because of, it started, uh, uh, now it's, you have to understand something. Israelis never protest personal things until now, because it's always considered very selfish, because we have a war going. I mean, what do you, you know, you're talking about, I mean, we have a war going, you know, everyone's against us, and you're talking about the price of cottage cheese. So this is very big, you know, for Israel. And so it started by the cottage cheese, and, and the, 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 the symbol for cottage cheese is a house. House is a feminine thing, okay, right? We're back at the house thing. 
and uh, doctors went on strike, and the name of a hospital is House, House of the Sick. So we have House, cottage cheese, House of the Sick, and education is House of the Book. So all these houses, which is the women's, women's place, are um, going on strike. And you know, so we're, again, we're, this is so feminine, and Israelis are very macho, even women, if, you know, Israeli women are... And then we had something that, uh, then we had another um, protest. Let's see, how do I do this short? Okay, it's like, who did you call a housewife? And this is protesting the cuts to mother pension rights. Um, If you worked in the workforce and then you left to become a mother, all your benefits after a really short time or four years, you lose all your benefits. So this is a protest against this. It's good to protest against this. The problem is, who are you demoting the work of a housewife or house manager? Again, the work of the woman at home, the work that we are talking about, even women, it's like, I'm not a housewoman, somebody else's. So that's the other woman syndrome, that if we have a successful woman, it's like, look for the other woman. And that's a project I called that the other women, which is someone that, which is also called by Sarah Bleffer Hardy, aloe mothers. You've heard the term aloe mothers. All the women helping us bring up, or men helping us bring up our children, are aloe mothers. Um, and uh, you talk, uh, I forgot your name. Terry. Terry, talking about not getting work. Okay, it's the same in Israel. A Facebook group called Mothers Demand Change uh, started just a few months ago, and they were exposing this problem exactly, that women who had children cannot get back to the workforce, okay? And this was a secret as well, because all women thought, maybe it's only my problem, I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough, I don't work well enough. Well, no, there are thousands of women, and they came out with an interesting campaign called Motherhood is Not a Crime. Look at the bars again. This is their campaign, Motherhood is Not a Campaign. And basically at the same time, guess who else came out with a campaign? And you know this one. Because Motherhood is Not a Liability, Mirki, Andrea O'Reilly, Demeter Press came out with a very similar campaign all across the notion, not knowing about each other, how here and here you have motherhood as a crime, as a liability, as get me out of your face. Okay. Now, this is Marilyn Waring, who is one of my icons. While women children and the environment are counted as nothing. The entire international economic system calls war productive and valuable. Now, it's not only an Israeli thing. I'll, I have just a few more slides and then I finish. Okay, what is the second commandment? Does anyone here know what the second commandment is? Honor your father and mother. Thou shalt not kill. Ah, good for you. Name? Good. Okay. Well, you're one of the only ones who gets it because all of us think it's like murder, right? It makes sense. No. The second commandment after you should have one God is you will not do an image. This is what we do, okay? And if we do images that threaten God or the that then hello this is our power i mean and we're artists other people don't really understand what but we're all artists and the power of the image is something that really interests me because one of the other things i'm trying to get back into the center is the meaning of art in everyday lives because art is always also a niche it's always also cut from educational system so this is the and, and um Images and metaphors have the power to create reality. Yes, yes, and they have enormous influence on shaping public opinion. This is us. But on the other hand, at the top are mathematics and languages, then the humanities, and at the bottom are the arts. (laughs) So why does this interest me? So I come back to something right here and now that's not easy, but um, uh, you heard about the bombing of one of the Buddhas by... uh, and you heard about the assassination of Sabine Mahmoud. You know that she was, she had an art, a very small art center probably like this. And I'm thinking, think of it. I'm kind of, th- I'm taking it very personally. I'm taking it personally because we are targeted. It was an art center, a small art center, okay? And I... I She was killed. She was killed about a month ago. 
I'm really sorry to be the one telling that one. Um, and now I'm going to jump for, to Yudit. Yudit is uh, uh, assisting. She's um, a major in an art school, in a known art school in Israel. And this is her child. She has a one-year-old. And she did a project. And um, we started working together. And I call this slide my first war as a mother. And why do I think it's so important? I think this is, this is so important because this is what she said to me. And Yudit, OK, what's important about Yudit? Yudit is the name, uh, it means to be a Jew, okay? The meaning of the name is to be a Jew. And Yudit was very, very Jewish in the way that she was active with, you know, American jewelry, jewelry around the world and, and foundations and traveling and stuff like that. I was never that way like she is. She really had this strong identity as a Jewish woman. And then she became a mother. And she told me something that kind of blew me away. And she said, you know, the war blew out. You know, we're all running to the, we, there's sirens around, and she has a one-year-old kid. And she says, I was thinking, I saw on Facebook what Shimon Peres, which was then, who was then the um, president of Israel, he said, Israel underwent another night in which millions of our citizens were under the threat of, rockets, of rocket fire. It is a few nights now that mothers with children in their arms can't sleep because of the fear of another siren. We will protect our children. Here we are protecting again, yes. And will not allow anyone to harm them. Um, and Yudit said, all I could think about was that, what about, the, what about the mothers on the other side? She did her whole way of thinking. This, this is not me, okay. I, there's, okay I, my awaken came, but it wasn't so extreme as Yudit's. And it's that's the threat of motherhood. Motherhood starts opening your mind of thinking inclusively in a way that threatens current day um, policies and where lots of money's going on, okay? Um, because, for instance, the formal education system of many countries is like, we are Israeli, we are Palestinian, we are, they are that, they are that. They're. And this is how the educational system works, and this is how arms, arms I mean, wars proliferate and because someone has an interest in them. And this interest is being pounded into kids. I see it happen with my own kids. And this is why motherhood, real motherhood, that is conscious motherhood is so threatening because it threatens the whole foundations of how we think of them and us. I think that's where I'm going to stop. Thank you.